Okay, so hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel after a rather long hiatus. Um, I've had a lot of stuff go on recently, um, sort of personally and in my training and stuff and um, I kind of backed off from the YouTube because it just seemed like another thing that I had to do. Um, having taken over the business on my own full time now, um, Wisdom for Weightlifting, I've been really busy with that and developing all of that. and. Now I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to start rolling out some videos um, for you guys, especially after I did a live on the Mirror Fit Instagram um, the other day during lockdown, just a little bit of mobility and stretching stuff. And it was really well received, uh, even by my teammates. So I thought, why not create something that's going to stick around rather than just for 24 hours and stick it on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to try and get a little bit better at posting little videos like this and tips and tricks and stuff of what you guys want to see. So um, if you have something else you want to see after you've watched this um, kind of behind the scenes tips and tricks and stuff and stick it in the comments down below. Um, so those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Davis. I'm a weightlifter for Great Britain. I uh, go by the Barbell Queen, which is a thing that was kind of coined to me um given my pageants and weightlifting so yeah today we are gonna do my routine that i do post training so my rolling and stretching is nothing crazy it doesn't take you loads of time um like 20 minutes max um is probably what it's gonna take us today and that's just because i'm gonna be going through it talking to you guys about it there'll be some stuff that really works for you some stuff that you don't need to do um so yeah and the whole point of like rolling and stretching after training is firstly do it while you're still in the gym then you get it done because if you go home and shower and eat and everything like that you're like yeah i'll do it while i watch tv we all know that doesn't happen um it just we're like oh tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and it, tomorrow never comes so um so i try and do it straight after training for that purpose and also like i find it easier to stretch when you know my muscles and everything are still nice and warm um and also i find it a nice wind down after training you know if you've had a heavy session and you know you're kind of all wired and you've had loads of pre-workout and caffeine and everything else like it's quite nice kind of like meditation time to just unwind relax uh try not to have your phone with you when you're doing it unless you're watching this video to do it um but try not to have any distractions and just have it as a little bit of like mindfulness time so let's get going you are going to need a foam roller, a ball, so just a trigger point ball or a lacrosse ball. Um, currently in lockdown, not at home, so I don't have mine, which is normally a little bit smaller, but this will do. And then if you have one, um, a peanut is great. If you don't have one, simply just gaffer tape two lacrosse balls together. Um, and that's it, because uh, we're going to just roll in stuff first, and then we're going to move on to some stretching and things afterwards. So always start big and get smaller so first off we are gonna do some rolling let me relocate you guys oh sorry didn't mean to put that there so i always just find it easier just to start with the big muscles so quads first nice and simple and like i know that you guys will probably know how to roll um but it's just kind of nice to go for it and then you get the full picture of what goes on so if you can do it single leg with the other leg like off the roller so that you're getting more pressure if you can't put the other leg down for support and if you really need to do both legs at the same time but i'm just kind of covering the whole muscle to start with and then you kind of work out where the niggly bits are so i know that just above my my knee there on my vmo is a bit niggly so there put a bit of pressure on and then if you can Bend and straighten that leg and it's going to get a bit of movement going through there. I can actually feel my knee joint being a little bit grumpy. Give it a roll. Also, rolling across. A lot of people go up and down when they roll, but they forget to go across the muscle as well. So, rocking across. And then just do that for all the bits that you find a little bit niggly you hear things either way on like rolling IT bands like some physios say do it some say don't I just kind of do it a little bit uh, change legs so 
there's so many things now that have come out as recovery tools and massage guns and stuff and I will actually try and do a review on like my full thoughts on those but in a quick summary they're nice to have they're good for firm for warming up um rolling and nothing really substitutes a good old roll so as much as we don't like it we need to do it and the reason we don't like it is because it hurts and the massage guns don't quite hurt the same which means it's probably not doing the same thing but we like to think it is so find that nasally spot also i'd only roll after training like you think about rolling it is like having a you know a deep tissue massage or a sports massage um you wouldn't want to do that and then go straight into the gym so like you wouldn't have a massage and go in the gym i mean so you don't want to be rolling before i'd only ever roll after or you know if you're someone who really struggles with mobility maybe do some rolling and stuff in the morning and then in the afternoon like do your training session because your body will have a bit of time to recover quick roll down the it band And that's that. If you have really tight calves, you can give the calves a little bit of a roll. But oh, let me move so you can see. Again, trying to make sure you get as much pressure. Oh, they're tighter than I realised. As much pressure as possible on the calves. So if you're oh, they're too tight. But if you can, lift your bum off and get into that muscle belly as much as possible. And again. Go in side to side across the muscle, not just up and down. And the other side. Yeah, we, we tend to forget about our calves. Um, I think that they don't really get used that much. But if you think about it, in day-to-day -day life, they're used every day to even get you out of bed and for your wee in the morning. So we're using our calves all the time. And in weightlifting, we use them more than we realise because obviously every time we hit that triple extension position, we're going up onto our calves. So they need a little bit more TLC than we realise. Um, last couple of the roller then is an orange up. So have a quick roll up and down my back. Get a few cracks out. But we're going to come back to our back with the peanut just to get a little bit more um, accuracy and a bit more pinpoint. And then lats, which are disgusting. Just a quick roll. And if you find you move your arm around and play around with it a little bit, you know, you'll find that point for you. And again, we're going to come back to these with the peanut. And the other side. I mean, I'm going to be truthful with you guys. This is a bit more in detail than what I would normally do after training. Um, wouldn't normally bother with my laps and stuff. I kind of try and do it once a week just to have a bit of focus or on a rest day, have a bit more of an in-depth roll like this. Generally, I just have a quick run through and everything. And then once a week, try and be a bit more in-depth. Oh. So there we go. Roller can go to one side. For now and next we're going to take our ball so first one and again it's a bit like calves that we forget about is feet so just getting that in the foot if you can get a smaller ball like a golf ball or a lacrosse ball you're going to get into those feet a bit better this is actually one thing one of the places that i would roll before training just to get those feet loosened up a little bit And the other one again if you find that you know they're really gnarly and they're really tight you want to spend a little bit more time on that area okay next one glutes not fun definitely my worst area for mobility and flexibility but the best area to look at. So, we need to look after them. We are going to take the ball, I'm going to kneel up so you can see it, 
and we're going to put it in the glutes and we're going to work around the band so we're going to work around this top band here and then we're going to work a little bit lower and then eventually we're going to come into the side here and into the hip so we'll start left leg so we're going to start at that top position and then if you can you take that foot up and go for the kind of number four position and then we can add a little bit of weight in here you might find doing it against a wall is a little bit better and you can get more sort of um, pressure or some people lie down but personally I just sit up and move around and generally having a chat like I am with you guys to someone in the gym and then just kind of have a rock around if you find a niggly bit you can again move that leg around different planes and really try and get into that muscle and change legs while i'm here guys and we're just rolling out you'll notice i'm wearing a barbell clean t-shirt you can get yours and all of the profits go towards helping me with my Olympic journey because those that you don't know in weightlifting in the UK we don't receive any funding so we have to work we have to find sponsorships and we have to come to lovely people like you to buy t-shirts um, to support the cause so um, I will post the link in the information below and you can rock a barbell queen t-shirt and then make sure you tag me in it on Instagram for your training sessions it is proven to make you stronger um, one last one with the ball so we go back back to that first side and if you find like that sort of your bony bit at the bottom of your pelvis and kind of get it around there and then if we just do like the butterfly sit and just kind of bounce it around you'll find I sometimes get a couple of hip cracks out we can change sides Into that hip then this one's not gonna be so nice so we're going into the side there so you want to lay on your side and then you've got like your bony bit and you want to go like just below that so just roll up and then you'll feel what i'm talking about i'm trying really hard to concentrate and talk to you guys right now so in there and again find that sweet spot and then if you can lifting that knee up and back down and just really working that movement. Oh. Oh. I can actually feel this like shooting into my glutes and, and down my legs, so that shows how tight that is. And then if we roll around onto the front of the hip. Oh, we had a crash. Into the front of the hip there. And again, I can roll around, move that foot around, different areas. And then change to the upper hip. So remember, this is kind of just a quick post training flush out. Like, try and spend, like I said, once a week a bit more time. Um, spending a bit more time in the area but it doesn't need to be crazy amount unless you really struggle with mobility like if you've got enough mobility to be able to execute the weight to movements properly you don't need to be spending crazy amounts of time rolling and stretching oh. and you'll probably find you have different like trigger points at different places like for me on this hip this side is okay but I just have to need to go a bit further around towards the back to really get that sweet spot on this hip and then into the front of the hip again you'll have one side that's better than the other for me this side's fine the other side i've got kind of chronic um injuries and stuff and where i tore that hip flexors so there's quite a lot of scar tissue build up um so it takes me a little bit longer on my left side to to roll out okay ball to one side and grab a peanut. Now, if you don't have a peanut, um, you can use a ball and then just do, um, take a little bit longer doing all areas, but I find this 
really good especially for lats um, and for back because you can just get the back done a bit quicker so we'll start with the back and you're going to aim to put it i don't even know if i can get my hands up so you're going to aim for between the shoulder blades here and then when we lie down what we need to do is take your arms round and up and then oh, you're going to turn so that your hands uh, your palms point behind you so if you come down here like that so you're going to from there and then hug yourself and then that's going to really open up your scapula at the back and really be able to get into those muscles so if we roll down lie down start at the top of the back so like in the traps arms up down give yourself a cuddle and take a minute there now this roller is actually pretty fancy all of them are and they're the like vibrating ones which i find most of the benefit for on this because rolling your own back is quite difficult um and i find it really useful for getting in these areas so you'll probably find it quite niggly between those shoulder blades especially now you open them up and then oh i don't know if you guys heard that but that was a really good crack and then just work down and again you can move the arms around give yourself a cuddle and just slowly work your way down your back again you'll have some areas so if you want to like stop on a spot but then pretty much just rocking up and down it's just going to help loosen that spot off and keep your head back and relaxed and re as relaxed as possible as you can be while you're in the lovely pain of rolling Ooh. lats so peanut in here and just kind of play around and find what works for you so you might want to tip that shoulder back you might want to bring it forwards depending on where those trigger spots are and again getting the arm to move and really digging into those lats Ooh. see i've been a bit lazy in lockdown and not enough rolling so i'm doing much more grunting and groaning than i should be when i'm filming this Oh. Change sides. Lats get a lot more use in weightlifting than we give credit to. Holding the start position, snatch grip and stuff, so it's important we look after them. Oh. Cool. So enough rolling um just going to take you through some of the stretches that i just do to finish off my training session so first one pancake stretch legs out in straddle and then you're going to reach over to one side and try and grab if i go this way try and grab your foot if you can and if you're feeling really saucy if you take that arm over the top it's going to take it into your lats here as well but if not here if here's all you can get and if you can't even sit in this position, get yourself against a wall, back flat, and then just sit there and just do the best you can. Um, really important one for start position is this one, because it's really bringing your back and hamstrings into play together. And then forwards. So I make sure I roll first just because then you know you've done a bit more on the muscles, kept them warm, might have been a while since you stopped training or you did your accessories and stuff. So find if I roll first and then stretch after. I've got a little bit more elasticity in the muscles. And then once you've been there a little while, if you try and creep those feet out a bit wider and then go again. If you can't get this low, that's fine. Remember I am an ex-gymnast and used to be a lot more mobile than this but have a little bit of an advantage so <sighs> cool so that's a nice little one next and i'm really bad at this one um is a pigeon stretch so in a lunge position drop that knee out to the outside and then stretch in there if you're like me and you can't even get that knee on the floor if you bring that foot in towards you you're going to be able to get the knee down and then we stretch forwards 
and then out to the side as well. You're going to really get a stretch on that. Change legs. So if nothing else, but I'm sure on time after training, I just try and go through these sort of like four or five stretches, um, specifically lower body. Like I'm going to do a little bit of upper body with you guys as well, but um, especially after a weightlifting session, you know, your upper body is going to have taken, um, your lower body so is going to take a bit of a beating. So if you're really short on time, like you're running to go somewhere else, just try and get these next few stretches done before you leave. So if you really struggle with the pigeon stretch, another thing you can do is do it with your foot on a box, um, your front foot on a box and then down. Or the other one, and I actually haven't learned this today, is get yourself against a wall, one foot on the wall, take your other leg across and then push down on that knee, pull that foot up. And the closer you get yourself to the wall, the more of a stretch you're going to get. Right, while we're at the wall, I'm just going to spin you so you can see a little bit better. Maybe tilt you up a tad. There we go. Okay, so cap stretch, some of you might know it as. So one foot against the wall. And then if you're already feeling a stretch in this hip, stay there. If you can, bring that foot up. If you're feeling really spicy, up tall. And then if you can, arms over the top and reach over your bent leg. You might want to put a cushion down or something. You're getting a little bit of knee pain. Whatever you do, make sure you're not compromising through your back. So don't try and just get yourself on the wall by arching. Try and keep that back nice and straight. Change sides. So again, this is it. It's all about progression. It's all about working for you. So just do what you can. If you can, do what I do. Fabulosi. If not, take your time, pace yourself. It's also a nice one to get into the quads as well. This gets hips and quads. Double your money, more bang for your buck. Everyone's a winner. Oh. So we've done kind of hamstrings, glutes, um, into hip flexor, just another one that's kind of a ductor, um, frog stretch. So you go knees out, feet out, and try and get your feet outside your knees. So I don't want to see this because you're not going to get something stretched. So try and get your feet at least 90 degrees or if not possible outside and sit forwards. And then if you can, you push back, you're going to really feel it in your groin and your adductor. If you can, creep them out a little bit wider. And then a quad only stretch. So if you lie on your side, take your bottom knee up to 90, take your ankle of your top leg, and then try and keep a nice straight line. So from your quad all the way up your body. Oh, I've got a head to get my nose. Try not to have legs up here. Legs should be nice and straight. And then if you just squeeze your glutes and squeeze your abs at the same time, it's just going to put a little bit of tension on that quad. Change sides. Oh, just spinning around so I can still talk to you guys and you're not getting like full butt view. Make sure body's nice and straight. No rogue knees. Squeeze your bum, squeeze your abs. And relax. So if you're really tight on time. You don't have time to do all the rolling and stuff. I'd recommend those few stretches. So that pancake stretch, 
um, pigeon stretch or a variation of couch stretch, frog sit and quad stretch. Five, take you five minutes uh, if you're really st stuck at the end of the session for time. Um, just a little bit of kind of upper body and back stuff. So, oh, I've got a couple of hip variations. Let's do those while we're on lower body. So, um, another one, good one for hips and quads. If you sit, take one leg out, sit on your bum, tuck that knee up and try and just lie yourself back if you can. If that's here, that's fine. If you can go all the way back, that's great. Again, making sure you're not compensating through your back. So I don't want to see this because it's just going to turn that hip flexor off anyway. You want to be flat. So if to keep your body straight, you have to be up on your elbows. That's fine. If you can be back flat. Perfect. And then change legs. really weird how some of these stretches like hit different like places because like I said I really struggled with my left hip but this stretch is hitting my right hip a bit more than my left so a little bit of variation is good sometimes just to mix it up and then last hip variation because my hips take such a beating and weightlifting um, so on your knees and you're going to try and reach back for your heels and if you really can the head back if you're struggling just go hands on hips squeeze your bum but if you can go all the way back and head back just try and relax as much as you can whilst you're upside down and really squeeze your glutes and it's really going to push into those hips oh okay this time we're going to do shoulders. So, lie on your front. Oh, pecs, should I say. So, lie on your front and you're going to take your arms like rubber posts. And then you're going to stretch back, across, take that leg over. And then you're going to feel it, hopefully, through this pec. And you'll get a little bit in your lower back too. And change side. So arms stay flat, roll the leg over. And then while we're on the floor, we'll do some lats. So sit on your knees, take your knees out to the side, make them more comfortable get flat in front and then you're going to take your hands to one side and then push into the side um, that's long so you're going to if I come this way they come to you there so forwards hands out to the side and then you're going to push into that long side and really feel it down that lap and down that side sides and then I really struggle with um, my wrists and stuff so I just finish off with a bit of a stretch on my wrists and forearms so just kneeling looking back Take the weight forwards, really try and stretch through those fingers. And you might feel a little bit as well if you try and almost rock back so the heel of your hand comes up and it will stretch into your fingers because um, we're gripping the bar so much that our hands are going to get tight too. And then you just kind of rock into each side, a little bit like my gymnast days. And then on the front, oh sorry, on the back for your hands as well, stretches down the front the forearm
So guys, that is me and everything that I go for, go through for my stretching. Oh, I've got some rogue hair going on too. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of a rundown about what I do after training. Um, hopefully it gives you guys a little bit of an idea. Um, maybe some things are different to what you've done before. Maybe some things are new. Um, comment down below what you do. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover and spend a little bit more time on, do let me know. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video and share it with all your training friends because if you found it beneficial, they're going to find it beneficial and we can share the love of some just quick, easy mobility that's not going to take you hours. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to get yourselves a Barbell Queen t-shirt and support the cause. Uh, love you guys and I will see you all next time.